Eddie Hearn is presumably in discussions with Dylan White with a view to having him fight on a matchroom show later on this year. The reason I say this is because Eddie Hearn, in a recent interview, came out and reeled off a list of names of potential opponents for White in his next bout, and those included the likes of Otto Wallen, Jermaine Franklin, Dempsey McKean, and Chris Ariola. Now, normally, when a fighter is coming off a devastating knockout defeat, I would recommend that the fighter has some confidence-building fights against lesser opposition because they're likely to be contending with mental scars from that devastating knockout defeat. And not only that, they may also have certain technical or physical deficiencies that led to the knockout defeat. Maybe a poor defense, poor stamina, etc., etc. But in the case of Dylan White, in this instance, I think it's different. The reason I say this is because mentally Dylan White is rock solid. He showed us that in the Povetkin rematch. Normally when a guy gets knocked out the way Dylan White did against Povetkin, they go into the rematch very cautious. I mean, just look at Anthony Joshua in the Ruiz rematch. Very cautious. And I could give you many other examples. But Dylan White was very aggressive, more aggressive in the rematch against Povetkin than he was in the first fight. Now, obviously, the fact that he was beating Povetkin prior to getting knocked out and he dropped him a couple times probably means that he would have retained more confidence than if, you know, than someone who, let's say, was being beaten up and then got knocked out in the fifth round, whatever it was, fifth or sixth round, he got knocked out in the first fight against Povetkin. So I get that. But either way, many people, even in Dylan White's position, who had been winning a fight and then got knocked out with one punch, they still would have gone into the rematch a bit nervous, a bit gun shy, boxing cautiously, etc. Wasn't the case with Dylan. Mentally, he's absolutely rock solid. Also, uh, Dylan White, from a technical perspective, I think has reached his limit because I think Dylan White knows how to box and he knows how to, you know, in his mind at least, execute certain boxing moves, but he lacks the biomechanics to do so in a neat and tidy and polished fashion. And I don't think Buddy McGirt or any other trainer is going to be able to change that because Dylan White has worked with some very good trainers over the years and they haven't managed to change it. So I think he is what he is at this stage technically and physically. And there's another aspect here, and that is Dylan White's chin, which I've talked about quite a lot over the past couple of years. To me, there's a clear deterioration in his punch resistance. The Dylan White of today can't take the same punch, in my view, as the Dylan White who even fought Derek Chisora twice. I don't think his chin is as good anymore. And certainly not the Dylan White who fought AJ many years ago, who took loads and loads of uppercuts before he eventually went down in the seventh. So, and I think this is due to the fact that Dylan White has been hit a lot in his pro fights. He's had a lot of tough contests. But also in the gym, Dylan White has a reputation of having these massive slugfests in the gym. And that puts miles on the clock. That's going to deteriorate deteriorate your punch resistance, okay? Wear down your punch resistance over time. So when you've got a guy who doesn't need rehabilitating, he doesn't need any confidence builders, really. I mean, look, I'm sure that his confidence took a little bit of a knock after getting knocked out by Tyson Fury, especially so soon after getting knocked out by Povetkin. But Dylan White just appears to be one of these characters who's just more mentally robust than most other human beings, including most other boxers. He's very mentally robust. So I don't, I don't think you need to give him loads of confidence building fights, if any, maybe one, but I don't, I don't think he really needs that. I don't really think he can improve technically. So why put him in against a Dempsey McKean, a Jermaine Franklin, an Otto Wallin, or even a Chris Ariola? I mean, Chris Ariola, I would say, is probably the best choice out of all of them because at least he has something of a name and he did well against Andy Ruiz. But the rest of them, I wouldn't even bother putting Dylan White in with them because there's a risk, there's a risk there, excuse me, because of the fact that Dylan White's punch resistance is poor these days. And the reward is, you know, what's the reward? I think with Dylan, really, if he's going to continue fighting, and personally, I think that from a health perspective, it's probably best if he retires. But if he is going to continue fighting, then I think he has to go for the big fights. Do you know what I mean? I think he, he has to. But 
again, if you're taking his health into account, you want to look at the more winnable big fights. So Daniel Dubois is one of the more winnable ones, in my opinion. I think that, yeah, he could get cleaned out by Dubois for sure. But I think that's more winnable than going in there against even Anthony Joshua. I think that's more winnable than going in there against Usyk. You know? So the, the Daniel Dubois, and I think that's more winnable than going in there against Joyce. So the Daniel Dubois fight, and of course there's a regular title on the line, that might be the best opportunity that Dylan White is ever going to get to win any kind of world title, is taking on Daniel Dubois for the WBA regular belt. Now, I'm sure the terms will not be in his favor. He's coming off a knockout defeat after all. And maybe that's why he hasn't chosen to go down that road because there was a lot of rumors going on that Dylan White was going to fight Daniel Dubois next. But again, maybe because he's firmly the B-side in that equation. Um, and when I say firmly the B-side, he's obviously sold a lot more tickets over the years and made a lot more money than Daniel Dubois. But he, again, he's coming off a knockout defeat. Dubois is coming off a win. He holds a belt. Therefore, I imagine Dubois' team, Frank Warren and Bowers and so on, they're going to act like they're the A-side. Whether they are justified in doing that commercially is a different question, but I imagine they're going to be acting like they're the A-side and perhaps Dylan White isn't happy with that, you know, based upon the numbers he's done in the past. And of course, fighting Tyson Fury at Wembley in front of 94, 95,000 people, whatever it was in his last fight. So, yeah, I think that I can understand, should I say, I can understand why Dylan White maybe wouldn't want to go down that road if he's not getting the kind of deal that he believes he deserves. But from an outsider's perspective, I think that's probably the best opportunity, I'm repeating myself here, but the best opportunity he may ever get at winning the world title is taking on Daniel Dubois now. Uh, I think that's a risk worth taking. The other fights out there, I think the Joseph Parker fight would be a good one for him because, yeah, uh, Dylan White is, uh, again, fragile in terms of punch resistance. But Joseph Parker isn't the most aggressive fighter out there. Uh, Dylan White's already beaten him before. And Joseph Parker's coming off a beating. You know, he didn't just get knocked out with one punch like Dylan White did against Fury. He's coming off a beating. And then he got knocked out with one punch. Do you know what I mean? So Parker potentially has sustained more damage recently than Dylan White. I know. Those knockouts, you can have neurological issues coming off those knockouts. I mean, just listen to what Michael Venom Page said when he got knocked out by Douglas Lima in their first fight. He was suffering neurological issues, symptoms for weeks or months after that fight. And that was just a one punch knockout, right? He didn't get a beating in, in there. So I get that. But I would imagine there's going to be more health consequences for Joseph Parker coming off that defeat to uh, uh, Joe Joyce than there would be for Dylan White coming off the defeat to Fury. But I'm sure both of them are not going to be uh, <laughs> what they once were after those fights. But either way, I think that's maybe a decent fight for Dylan White to take if he wants to continue. The Joseph Parker rematch. Um, Derek Chisora as well. I think that's a decent fight because we've seen Derek Chisora's punch resistance deteriorate over the years as well. So these are fights which are bigger than the ones Eddie Hearn is proposing, you know, the Jermaine Franklins and Wallins, because these are really just comeback fights. They're confidence builders, other than Wallin, who can actually box. And maybe Jermaine Franklin's a bit dangerous. Maybe they're all a bit dangerous, right? They all potentially have the power to knock Dylan White out. Um, but none of these guys are the names that the uh, people who I just mentioned are. So why take a risk against any of these guys? <laughs> why not just fight? Why not take a risk against Dubois, Parker, Chisora instead? And I know some people are talking about Dylan White against Deontay Wilder. Look, I want to see competitive fights. And, you know, we, we have to see what Wilder's like against Robert Hellenius. But if he comes through that and it's business as usual for Wilder, then I'm going to have to imagine that the Dylan White fight again, from my, from my perspective, would not be particularly competitive, Wilder against White. I've long suspected that Deontay, and I've said this many times in many videos for many years, Deontay Wilder would knock Dylan White out. Just from a stylistic perspective, I don't see Dylan White winning that fight at all. Uh, 
I think he's at some point going to get hit with a right hand. I suspect Wilder will find a home for his right hand before White finds a home for his left hook. And that'll be the end of it. So yeah, not really that keen on that fight. The AJ fight, I understand Dylan White taking it if that does happen later on this year. Because again, it's a big fight, big money. But, you know, not a world title. Um, and it's against the guy that he's been knocked out by before. You know, so it's not as favorable for him as going in there against, uh, let's say, Joseph Parker, Derek Chisora, or even a Daniel Dubois who he hasn't fought before. So, yeah, that's my take on it. I don't think you should put Dylan White in with these guys that Eddie Hearn mentioned at all. I think these, they're more risky than you realize because of how vulnerable Dylan White is in terms of punch resistance. And what's the reward? You know, Dylan White is mentally solid. It, the, the problem with Dylan is not his confidence. <laughs> the problem with him is his chin and his age. He's 35 now, I believe. A lot of wear and tear. And his uh, biomechanics, you know, lack of balance and coordination and all that. These, these are the issues, but it's not an issue of confidence, at least not in the main, at least not to the extent that most fighters coming back from knockout defeats have confidence issues, you know? So that's my take on it. Give me your take in the comment section below. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms, and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct, but that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, it's decentralized, and it's 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract, there's no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.